Welcome back to Stay True Sundays. Stay True Sunday podcast with your girl Kelly Jean, your boy Lucky Lou, Lucky Luciano, and Cassette Goes. You guys, it is Sunday. What are y'all up to? I know we haven't podcasted in a while, like we always do, but we're back once yeah, again. Yeah, it's been about a good two, <laughs> two or three weeks, huh? Now, what happened last time? How come we didn't podcast last time? It was Christmas. Christmas. Oh, Christmas. Yeah, it was your fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was Christmas. No, uh, with the holidays and everything that we had going on, you know, we just decided to stick to the whole family thing. And but enjoy. we back. It's a new year, twenty twenty. We in full time mash mode. Mm-hmm. Let's get it. Happy New Year's, everybody! If you are watching this and we haven't wished you a Happy New Year's, Happy New Year. Feliz Nuevo Año. <laughs> when is Chinese New Year? Shout out to all my Chinese fans. Everybody watching from China. No, Chinese New Year's. It's in February. No, I thought Chinese New Year's was. It's like at the end of January. It's in February. It's coming up. Oh, you so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember because there was a bunch of little Chinese kids in my elementary school. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to work. I used to work at a vape shop, and like a lot of our products from China have to come from China. So uh, in the weeks leading before Chinese New Year's, like they would shut down. Yeah, so we would have to order everything in bulk. Oh, you know what? Matter of fact, when I got those flash drives, that's what they were telling me too. That I had to that that they were, their whole country shuts down for like two yeah. weeks. They don't do no shipping. No, everybody shuts down. They don't work for shit for like two weeks. Yeah, like the whole country. Yep, that's I, crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, they did tell me that when I ordered those uh, Luciano TV flash drives from China. You think we could function like that here if we just shut down for two weeks with no import export? Hell no, nah, because even on New Year's Day when everything was closed, we were like going crazy. We were driving around looking for somewhere to eat and everything was closed. And we were like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Nah, no mail. You can't mail nothing out. For Everything shuts down for two, two weeks. Two weeks? Hell yeah, no! Yeah, they they be sitting down just chilling, eating some rice. Especially with our New Year's being as close to Christmas as it is. You wrong. Just be sitting on their ass eating rice <laughs> uh, for two weeks. They can't go nowhere. Everything closed. You know what I'm saying? They gonna eat some rice. Mm. Jesus Christ. Shit, I'd be sitting down eating some beans and some rice if I was everything was shut down for two weeks, mm-hmm. man. Well, anyways, we had Cassette Coast over for New Year's. We didn't really do much. We were just chilling with the kids at home, popping fireworks. Lucky made some steak. Yeah, I did. I made some uh, ribeye steaks. They were, uh, they was good, but I think for the price. For they weren't all that. It wasn't, nah, it was like $80 <laughs> for that big chunk of steaks. And they were uh, like ribeye steaks, but they're all connected together. So you got to slice them, slice your own steaks. But yeah, man, for $80, I could have bought. You know what I'm saying? Some ribeye steaks already cut and threw them on the grill. Sure, you, gotta, you probably could have got some catering for $80. Yeah, I know. But no, nah, it was good. I liked it. I didn't know that's what you spent on but yeah, it was good. And I did enjoy myself with y'all. It was a good time. Yeah, I don't even remember you leaving. We went to sleep. Oh, you probably don't remember. Hell no, I don't even remember when you left. I was scared for you. So they were drinking, but I mean, Coast looked legit. He went all all the way drunk. You know what I'm saying? But Lucky was turnt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he, was, he had his red robe. He yeah, was doing yeah. all of this. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm no, but we did have a good time. I actually had to. I was the first one out of us three to go lay it down. Um, it was around three in the morning, and then after that, it was like I think it's time to go. Coast is like I think it's time for me to go. Yeah, man. Nah, I can't drink. If I, that was the last time I'm gonna drink like that for this whole year. I ain't drinking like yeah, that. Yeah, let's like. talk about New Year's resolutions. Do y'all have some? Do y'all are y'all the type that make New Year's resolutions and then like the second week of January y'all breaking them? I was pretty good last year with my New Year's last year. I, I made it till like about halfway through the year. What was, your what was it? I forgot. Not to drink. <laughs> Boy, you a lie. You was I drinking. Did. I made it all the way to like my birthday. Yeah, right. Yeah, I did. Okay. What about you, Cook? Yeah, so last year I didn't make any resolutions because I don't know. Uh, so last year I had started that keto diet thing, but mm-hmm. I started after Thanksgiving and 
I was thinking to myself when I was trying to pick the day when to start, I was like, well, I, I was, it'll be my New Year's resolution. But then I got to thinking, man, that's like a, to me, resolutions are like a gimmick almost. Yeah. To where it's like you're just doing it because you're supposed to have one. So I started mine early because I felt like. You I, should already do it. Yeah. If it's, if it's, if I don't consider this a resolution and I'm considering this is just this new way of a lifestyle, a lifestyle, yeah, then it, it I'll, I'll probably stick to it better if I didn't just chalk it up as it was a New Year's. Yeah. Season. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. but nah, I'm gonna stick to mine. I gotta, I wanna, I wanna work out more. I wanna r- go running more. I wanna be healthy. I wanna quit drinking. Mm-hmm. Just cause I gotta, I know I got a lot of people that depend on me and look up to me. So I gotta be positive, be a positive role model. And I, every time I start drinking, I be going in back into my old ways of thinking. You know what I'm saying? And I can't do that no more. I'm too damn old. I gotta grow up, man. I gotta grow up one day. Say it again. I gotta grow up, man. Shit, no. I'll, I'll be thirty nine years old this <laughs> this year. I'll be thirty nine years old. I was talking about the part where you're like, I'm too old. Oh uh, yeah, I'm too old for that <laughs> shit, man. <sighs> he thinks I'm clowning him sometimes when I'm trying to remind him his age, but like sometimes it's just kind of like I'm not clowning you. I'm just like, it's reality, baby. <laughs> like you really getting to that point where you just need a, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm not too far behind him in age, and I can see how sometimes it's it's not even on your mind of, of your age and, and yeah. It, you feel as or what was that saying? You 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 are as old as you feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, and I don't feel like my age. Like when I was young, I used to think when you like 39, 40 years old, you old and gonna be like walking with a cane already. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I don't feel like that. I still like have the same, you know what I'm saying? Like if I was in my 20s. That's crazy because I'm the total opposite. Like my birthday is this month and I'm turning 25 and I feel like I'm 37. I feel like I'm just right there. I feel like I'm in my middle ages of 30. I don't know. That's probably because you're just doing a lot for your age. You have, you I know, feel like taking I, care of kids I, yeah, and the household. Complete opposite. And then my hips be giving out. <laughs> and I, I be like, oh, hell no. <laughs> like, I legit be feeling it in my body. Like, I feel it. I feel like I'm getting old. And I'm barely turning 25. That'd be, I don't feel like I'm getting old in my body. But, yeah, New Year's resolution. I definitely want to support him. I want to, like, push him to be better and... With pushing him, I'll be pushing myself and improving myself. So that is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard somebody say. Really? The most selfless <laughs> thing I've ever heard somebody say in regards to their New Year's resolution. Just helping me with mine. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's because really that's with you, you, you partner and you, you're a team. You know what I'm saying? When you live together, it's like we're one. You know what I'm saying? It's not. You but, can't see it like we're separate. Yeah, and I just see it as like I wake up fine and dandy every day like it don't matter what happened yesterday today i wake up and i'm just like what are we gonna do today you know what i'm saying like i'm just like it's a new day and he's like not like that so whenever i see myself like feeling like i need to sit down somewhere because he's not feeling you know positive and upbeat like i'm just like you know what i know i'm not gonna deal with that like i'm gonna get up in his face and be like (laughs) <laughs> we gotta get it baby like it's a new day you know yesterday was yesterday like let's go yeah. so that's basically where i'm coming from like where i would usually in the past just like give him his space and let him go through his thing on his own and mentally i'm like all right he's gonna miss me and like tonight or tomorrow you know like he'll come around whenever he's ready now i'm just like no nigga snap out of it you know? <laughs> <laughs> either go work out either do this either do that and then he has his goals so i feel like if i just come to him and talk to him and tell him like hey come on you know you said you were gonna do it let's do it let's do it so that's thank you where, baby thank you thank that's, you that's, that's what i be needing yeah. so, okay so i guess uh let's say outside of that what what would you like to see for yourself in 2020? Like, where, what do you, where do you want to be uh, in 2021? Like, what do you want this year to kind of encompass? I don't know, man. Like, that's where I'm kind of like, it's foggy. When I, I can't really look at my life and say, like, this is something I really, really want. Because I feel like everything that I've, I need and, and, and not want, need 
it's already there you know what i'm saying and then like not only that i'm turning 25 and like i'm feeling like okay i'm about to have my last baby like i'm literally having my last baby this year you know what i'm saying like it's i'm getting my tubes tied it's like done and it's just like from i feel like life's about to start so i'm just i feel like this year is just gonna close a chapter of some sort i don't know if that makes any sense like does that make sense to you yeah. Like I I don't know It just kind of feels like This is just the end Of a new beginning This year is gonna be like Okay we're gonna get settled In a new home Hopefully You know And then start a new Journey with YouTubing Like Not that we just started it But like It's just like We're focusing more on it And then I'm having the baby And then it's just gonna be Our, like, our last baby And then Our other kids Are already growing up So it's just like Alright This is like Me wrapping up the gift you know of life to myself because from now on it's just like they're gonna grow and then once they're old enough you and i are gonna you know <laughs> have some time for ourselves finally yeah i don't know if it makes sense but i really i guess i do have some things that i want to work on maybe putting myself somewhat first sometimes in what sense like if I need to go get some air, <laughs> I feel guilty a lot of times. Like I don't do it because I feel guilty. Yeah. And I don't know. I just feel like okay, I'm just. Baby. You need some air. I got all the air you need. Come See? over here, little girl. I got some air for you. I got a, <laughs> what kind of air you need? I got some cold air, some warm air. Or even it, it, it's not even like having to step outside, but like. Finding the hobby of painting has been like a really like thing that I'm just like, all right, if not that reading, he brought reading to my life. Like, oh, you know, it's cool to read. And it's something that's just like right here. I could just pick up a book or I could pick up my paintbrush and my canvas and just start something, you know, yeah. you don't have to finish it. But yeah, it's just like taking some time to like get my mind off of just family and chores and, you know, just. Yeah, no, but that will stress you out if that's all you're doing with your life. It's just taking care of other people because I be feeling stressed out sometimes with that too. Because before when I would like leave on the weekend and go do shows or go out of town and do stuff, that would be like my little break or my little breath of fresh air, you know what I'm saying? And then I'd come back home and, you know what I'm saying? But now it's like I'm just always here, you know what I'm saying? So that do be getting a little stressful and i know a lot of mothers can relate to where i'm coming from and then like a lot of fathers with like a big household and stay at home wives can relate to him you know so it's just it, it happens coast <laughs> so coast is telling us he's like ready to settle down and maybe possibly have a kid and yeah, it's, I mean, that's what i would like to say i don't want to call that a, a resolution but Going into 2021, I would like to hope that within the course of this year, I've kind of at least laid down the the path or the footsteps of getting to that. You know what I mean? Where yeah. I've, I've got to, I think every man should should experience that in life, yeah, that's like what I'm to do. raising a family and like having because no one really you won't you won't really like know love. And so you know how, like your kids, how much your kids love you. You know what I'm saying? When you if you really take care of your kids, you know what I'm saying? Your kids will love you like nobody has ever, not no girlfriend or somebody like my daughters love me like, you know what I'm saying? No one has ever loved me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I hear people say that all the time, but for somebody like me, it just sounds like somebody in that position it sounds like something cool for them to say like, like it doesn't, yeah it doesn't it won't resonate you. In my mind. you won't get it until it happens yeah. until you like wake up yeah. and see them like happy to see you or when you walk in the door and they run up and hug you you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you won't you won't that's why i said it i think that or like little things like when that. houston he gets on our nerves like trust me he gets on our nerves but in the mornings like when he wakes up next to us and he's just like looking at you like and he smiles and he's happy that he sees you yeah you know what I'm saying? it's just little things like that it's just like oh you're so cute like i just love you so much like you know and then they just hug you and or our last night when we, me and kingston were uh in my room watching a movie it was it wasn't a scary movie but it was a movie with like some killing and stuff and this guy was getting attacked by an animal 
and she was asleep but houston was still up and he was just sitting there watching it like what the hell am i watching he because he watches cartoons and stuff he's never seen no shit like that on a movie you know what i'm saying on the tv so that was like his first little dose of a scary movie you know what i'm saying and then when he fell asleep last night the movie was still on me and kingston was still watching it and then like he woke up in the middle of his sleep and then he was like, Dad, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, he'll tell you. He's like, I scared. I'm yeah. like, oh. Yeah, I was like, what you scared of? Come here. And I grabbed him and I hugged him. And then he just went, fell right back to sleep. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, but it's little moments like that that is just, yeah. You won't, you won't understand. Like, even when it comes to, like, your mom, I feel like as a woman, I didn't understand how much, how much mom my you. mom really loved me or like went through you know to give me the life that i did live um until i became a mom and then i realized like fuck like i was so mean bad. i was bad <laughs> like i did not appreciate my mom and kids if y'all are watching this with your parents y'all really need to like hug your parents love on them because man you know one day they're here and then the next they're gone. You never know what can happen. So I'm thankful that my mom is still around. And yeah, but you won't know until you become a parent how much your parents put in work and like, yeah. Yeah, I want to check that out, man. I want to see what that's all about. Oh, ladies, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> oh, freaking IG. It's always IG, huh? Well, I think about my <laughs> nah, but yeah, New Year's 2020. Um, what do y'all want to talk about today? Uh, we went to church today. You, you want to tell them how that went? Well, we have two different recollections of what the preacher preached about. Yeah, I asked, like, did you hear the message? And he's like, yeah. They wandered around the desert for 40 <laughs> years. So the there there were Israel were they what were they, the I Hebrews, some the Hebrews I think they were, <laughs> and they they uh, wandered around the desert. They were so they were slaves in Egypt first. You know what I'm saying for hell alone they were slaves in Egypt. And, and then they, he freed them. And they would eat onions. That's all you got out of the message. <laughs> See this, no, this no. why I like sitting next to him because I can look at him like. You got to pay attention. I heard that. I was like, damn, they used to eat onions. That was what they, they would sit by the river and eat onions. So anyway, they escaped and then they left. They didn't escape. God set them free. No, they escaped from Egypt first. I think Moses led them or somebody, Abraham or somebody led them out of there. And then they left and escaped. And then when they finally, they said there was a promised land. But when they got to the doorstep of the promised land, they seen some big ass giants. And they were like, man, we ain't going over there. So they went like some other, but God told them to go there. You know what I'm saying? But they were scared. And then there was like 12 dudes that went to go up there to the doorstep to lead all these thousands of people. And 10 people said, no, nah, there's giants over there. And only two of them, Joshua and somebody else said, Man, this is where God told us to go. No, we need to go over there. And then the other ten were like, "Nah, there's it's fucked up over there. We, we can't. can't take the the giant." Yeah. So they went somewhere else. They ended up roaming around the desert for forty years until that whole generation died, and it was like their sons wandered up, ended up right back to where they went, were at forty years ago at that um, doorstep. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a doorstep. It was like a river or something they had to cross. So the land, the land of the milk and the pro- honey, the promised it, land. it led them to the milk and honey, the <laughs> promised land. But they had to not be scared and they had to believe in God and trust it, even though it was like a they had to cross a river when it was like flooded. You know what I'm saying? And all these people, they would have drowned. You know what I'm saying? But once they set their feet in the water, the water stopped rushing like hard like that and it got held up down the stream it's somewhere. It's funny to hear his side of this message. That's what he said. <laughs> So anyway, they made it across, and there was a town right there. And they, he, God told them to circle the town. They circled the, the little building or whatever, and the walls came tumbling down. And they took it over, you know what I'm saying? But that would, that would it took them 40 years to wander around but the desert. But what was the whole point of that story? That they had to have faith, and they had to listen to God's promises. Because God promised them and said, I'm going to... Lee, I, I'm gonna walk with you. I'm gonna be with you, but you gotta, you know what I'm saying? Take a step of faith and do what I say. 
and not fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs> My, I'm not gonna make this long like he did. Like he just went. That's exactly that, what he said. He did say that, but he like didn't like make it all about their story about walking around the desert. This he the, did. The, he said that. The point. The point of him bringing that little piece of the message into his service or whatever is that if they would have just stuck to God's mentally promise. mentally you know stuck to God's promises instead of looking around and being like man you um, know they're trying to go their own way we're in we're in the desert like we might as well would have, we we were better off as slaves cuz they were used to the slave mentality cuz they had been slaves for years so that's what they were saying they were better off being slaves eating onions than having to literally starve and wait until God would like present this bread that was Pana. full of of n- nutrition, you Mana. know, and that gave you all the nutrition you needed. You know, they had to wait for it. You know, whenever God was like, "Very, right, I'm gonna bless y'all," you know. But the whole point was that if they would have just listened to God's promises and trusted in His promises, like they would have been fine the first time that they came across the promise then. But since they were not mentally there, like basically the message said you have to change uh, your mentality and you're not the pilot. Let God be the, the pilot. pilot. Like he's the one. And even if you go through things like he's there for you, you know, he's there with you. So you got to go through it and you got to learn from it. And you just gotta trust in him, and that's see. what I said. You, <laughs> you did say that, <laughs> <laughs> but you know it was just like, okay, you're throwing me off. Onions and honey and milk. <laughs> I was hungry. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> like, damn, they was eating onions. I'm hungry right now. I eat some onion rings. <laughs> but yeah, we went to church today. That's you know we're trying to like really be more on a like a schedule on like a fill our time up with positive yeah another thing that we decided to do is not go out to eat as much or spend money for entertainment yeah because usually we would go out to eat right after church and we didn't do that today yeah so willpower is like it's, it's, and i came home made something hard, to eat and they was hating on what i cooked talking about it was some jailhouse food <laughs> I, it was some it was some man i'm gonna give you a recipe right now if y'all want to eat it it's good <laughs> it ain't all that it's good that ain't it it ain't gonna cost you number like ten dollars you get you some pack of little hamburger meat you get you some shells jesus you know the little noodles shells the little shell noodles you get them and you get you a can of tomato sauce and then you throw it in the pan you throw the the noodles on the pan with some grease and let that cook and you can throw some garlic in there some onions for some flavor and then you throw the hamburger meat on there and then you season it up and then you throw a can of tomato sauce in there and then fill the tomato sauce can up with water after you empty it out and then throw that water in there and then you put the top on it and let it cook and then you about 15 minutes you're gonna be ready and then you eat it with some bread that's some jailhouse food it, that's them jealous. Like I'd be like, oh, this is what we gotta eat. <laughs> you didn't want to go out to eat. I, I didn't want to eat it, but I was hungry, so I ate some. But in the middle of it, I was like, this ain't it, man. I'm pregnant. Uh uh-uh. uh I used to make something like similar to that when I was a kid. I would get hamburger. It's struggle food. Yeah, would, that's what it is. <laughs> that's. I used to eat it as a kid and didn't know it was struggle food. That's I used what to be like, oh, this go hard. <laughs> <laughs> I would get hamburger meat. I would round it up. I would get instant mashed potatoes. Ooh. Mix that together. I would get uh, uh, shredded cheese. Throw that in there. And uh, sometimes I would get like green onions or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Throw that in there. Mix it all up. And this shit was fire. <laughs> good. And I was like, man, I just created something. Yeah. I'm t- <laughs> okay. So. But then I went to a restaurant and I saw that shit on the menu and they just called it Shepherd's Pie. I was like, <laughs> So so yeah, I would eat that too without the, without the shell noodles. You could do it with potatoes too. Yeah. So just cut the potatoes up and throw that in there with the tomato sauce and everything. You know what I'm saying? Hamburger meat and potatoes. And yeah, I used to do it like that too with the uh, potatoes when we ain't had no shells. Yeah. But that's what that is, babe. That's struggle food. That's like all right. This is all we got in the pantry and in the fridge. That's why. That's probably why I don't like it. Cause I went 
Type in the comments and let me know what's your struggle food. Like, what's your go-to struggle food? Because I know, like, growing up, I had a lot of go-to struggle foods. Like, a lot. I used to eat Domino's pizza. Mine were quesadillas. Like, you would put the, the tortilla, the cheese, and then, like, either sausages. Cut the little sausages up and put them in there. Or, like, ham. And I'd just be eating those back-to-back or Hot Pockets. I think that's why I hate Domino's Pizza, because I used to eat that as a kid all the time. Domino's Dang, you had pizza. money to order Domino's $20. when you was little? $20. You... <laughs> See, we ain't had that. We had to go in the fridge or in the pantry. Pop-Tarts was another one of mine. Like, I could eat Pop-Tarts all day. I, re- I remember uh, making homemade nachos when we didn't have nothing at the house. I would make homemade nachos. Hopefully, we had tortilla <laughs> chips that I could just put some shredded cheese on, but sometimes we didn't have that. Sometimes I had to get some of the sour cream and onion chips. Yeah. You use that, put some cheese on it, mm-hmm. throw it in the microwave, and they come out all hard and Man, y'all making me hungry. I know. I'm over here like, damn. Yeah, it made me some nachos right now. Do some hamburger meat on it. Uh, you used it on a damn noodle soup. <laughs> it, and then the worst part about it is that he makes it so watery, like he doesn't let it dry up. Like kind of like some spaghetti. Nah, like like he makes it like so soupy. juicy and soupy. Like you can't even like, oh man, like. I'm sorry, babe. <laughs> Damn. I ain't see you come up and making something to eat. Because you already had it in your mind you was going to make that. Y'all don't ever uh, do the curbside grocery shopping? Yeah, We've we have. It. Yeah. I like doing that because you can you can watch your total. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You spend less when you do that. Yeah, you go up in the store and you just throwing stuff in the back. That you don't even need. You need. No, and, and, I'm guilty no, too. No, there's so much shit at H-E-B. That's how they get you there. It's like Walmart. You go in Walmart for yeah. one thing and you end up buying five things that you don't even need. Same thing at H-E-B. It's just so much shit they sell there. Yeah, I prefer that curbside thing. That's way better than me. Mm-hmm. Whole Foods delivered too. I just saw that on Amazon. And then plus, like, people at the grocery store, like a lot of people rude, don't know how to act, and you end up getting in confrontation with somebody. That's happened to you? I mean, it don't happen regularly, but yeah. Yeah, but not out here. Not out here. Yeah. Well, yeah, when you when you closer to H town in the city. I don't know. I don't know. It's happened to me. Yeah, I didn't get into an altercation, though, but I feel like last time I was telling him I went to Target. And some lady hit me from behind with the shopping cart. And I was like, all right, you know, it's okay. She didn't even say sorry. She was just like, oh, you know, like, oh, my bad, you know. But she didn't say sorry or anything. And then she did it again. (laughs) Like, back to back. And I was just like, oh, because it hurt. Like, it hurt. She hit the back of my ankles, like, um, the back of my feet. And, and my back Was she not paying attention? She I don't know I'm not gonna sit here And say no She did it You know With malicious intent But I just feel like I don't know So did she just laugh about it? Both yeah she, she didn't say sorry Or anything She was just like uh, You know like oh, no. And I felt Like I was like Babe am I tripping For feeling like that? Like cause I feel like She did that shit on purpose I felt you it tar- You should have turned around And said excuse me but I'm too nice. Yeah, don't be so nice. I don't not not only that, but like I try to like I already look like I'm that type that's gonna turn around and be like, Bitch, what the fuck you know, you know <laughs> I always be saying something when somebody do something like that, Kingston be like, Dad, stop, dad be quiet. See, I'm I'm not. I'm just like it's okay. I like brush it off and I like I don't know. I feel like I'm a nice person the first time you accidentally do that, but when you back door it right back and do it again I don't think I'm gonna be such a nice guy yeah like I couldn't I had to stop I had to stop and like take the pain and like shake it off cause it hurt me I was like damn that shit hurt you ever get hit in the back of your foot with the shopping well it was both of mine and she hit my back so Uh, it was just like uh, both of the time you should have turned around yeah I should have but no I feel like you made me a better person was she old not even but she was white Bitch, what you doing in my hood? <laughs> <laughs> ah, what y'all get her ass in my target for? I don't know. But we do get looks. 
I know I do. I mean, because our tattoos, yeah, because my teeth and we masking. And we jade out sometimes, looking rough at the grocery store. You know, you just want to go in there with your hair all messy and no makeup and. Yeah, we be getting looks around here sometimes. I don't, I don't get funny looks whenever I go places, but what I do notice is that nobody want to help me do nothing when I go somewhere. Oh, like, damn. Like, uh, there's uh, whoever working at the store that go up to everybody except for me. Oh, can I help you find something? <laughs> They'll ask you everybody. Yeah. Can you help with anything? But me, they just like, we make eye contact, and they look away. Like, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So if you do work in retail, uh, you know, try and help everybody and anybody. Ask for help. Yeah. I don't like when they be asking me. Smile, I be like, leave me alone. Smile. Be be. What is the word? Court court. You know, cordial with everybody. You know where they do that at CVS. When you go into CVS, oh. they'll follow you around the I damn CVS. I ain't gonna CVS. lie. That shit. That shit, that gets on Can CVS, I help you find something? Well, like, what are you looking for? I None of your damn business. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I understand because CVS is small, you know. So it's just kind of annoying. Like, dude, I'll find my way around here. Yeah. But I feel like they be doing it like to like get you in and out. But sometimes it's like I've gone in there for a pregnancy test and they're like, Can I help you find something? And I'm just like, Uh, <laughs> where's the fe- yeah, feminine no. section? And it's embarrassing because it'd be like the manager, the manager's a man, a little short Mexican man at yeah. this one. So it's just like, Ugh, no, I'm good, I'm fine, thank you. And I do be lost at CVS sometimes. I know because they move this shit around. I but I'm walk like, around damn, there. should I ask? That's for what help? happened to me too. I went in there looking for <laughs> something. I was like, nah, I got it. And then he sees me walking back and forth and <laughs> lost like a motherfucker. Don't know what I'm doing. You remember shopping at Georgia's at Greens Point? Yeah. I'm telling you, them girls in there, as soon as you walk in, they greet you and be like, and they'll ask you, can you find anything? No, I'm just looking. Oh, okay. Yeah, help yourself. And you start walking around. They're about five feet behind you the entire time you go around. The Cause they don't want you stealing. Shit. No, what hap- What it is is they. He would have all those girls working there because dudes would wouldn't want to act like they ain't got no money to the girl you know what i'm saying so they would end up spending money on clothes that they normally wouldn't spend because it's the girl like oh look this will look good look look try this you know what i'm saying i trust me i worked in retail and i worked in sales uh, yeah that's what it works do. Nah, to me that was a turn off man like i just want to get in here and do my shopping maybe i want to pick up some clothes it look crazy I don't want somebody behind me judging me the entire time, you know? No, well, I wasn't like that. I wasn't pressuring them, but, you know, I worked at a shoe store for three years. I was the only little Mexican girl in that shoe store. Everybody else was black. So, you know, and then I would always be like, hi, welcome to City Gear. How can I help you? Let me know if you need any help, you know? <laughs> There's your section over there. And, yeah, it, it works when you're, like, friendly and you're like, can I help you? Yeah. You need help? And then they end up spending a check. Mm-hmm. You know, one time, like a couple of times, customers would even be like, do you want me to buy you some? And I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had my eyes on those right there. Man, being a woman. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Aw. But um, <clears throat> I know that we had this topic come up. I know we're like getting off topic right now. We're just like talking between us. But we did want to talk about this. Um, Lucky and I were actually talking about this the other day that what? we didn't podcast about that shooting that happened um, down the street on 45. What the, shooting? And the music video shooting. Oh, right. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, this yeah. kind of taps. This subject kind of. Ta- well, this conversation is gonna tap into the whole like New Year's. What Lucky was talking about. The drugs, staying away from alcohol, I'm just being more positive and putting more positive out there. Yeah, because so, I feel like you get what you give and you... Let's break the story down real quick. Um, there was a video shoot late at night, right? Not even I mean, late, I don't know. Like I don't really know the story. I just know there was some niggas shooting a video and somebody came and shot it up. I don't, I don't know yeah, nothing else. Yeah, but two died and then the rest were injured. Some of them were injured. But, yeah, long story short, I know that we were like, damn, when we heard about it, because it was down the street. I mean, it was like local rappers, right? Like Mm -hmm. upcoming. They were young, too. Yeah. Rappers be getting killed like that or from taking drugs, just taking pills and not waking up. And it just be happening. And 
I think a lot of rappers be rapping about the, the shoot 'em up, bang Glorifying bang, and it. having the guns and taking the drugs, but they don't realize the, what comes with all that. The you know what I'm saying? Like if you wanna if you wanna live that life, you gotta know that that's what comes with it. Them drive bys, innocent people dying, your homeboys dying, people getting killed, and people overdosing, overdosing. on drugs. That shit come with it. Like <clears throat> even niggas rapping about like trapping and selling drugs it ain't just the cops that you got to watch out for it's the the jackers and the robbers there's just like there's drug dealers there's also niggas that their whole hustle is robbing the drug dealers like i grew up with niggas like that like that was their whole get down they never sold dope their whole hustle was robbing the niggas that sold dope and those are the niggas that you got to watch out for and you got to understand that comes along with it too when you're in that game and you're in that lifestyle selling dope that comes with it and you got to be prepared for that too it ain't just the feds and the cops you know what i'm saying it's the jackers that look prey on niggas like that that they see them with the jewelry and the cars and the money and they say man let's go get this nigga and they used to, I, they be like shit it's all a hustle that's a hustle too Cause niggas would say, man, you ain't no real hustler. You a robber. You a jacker. And they'd be like, shit, nigga, no, that's my hustle. You know what I'm saying? Do you have any advice for like, up, well, I don't want to say upcoming rappers, but yeah, like just young people young, in the street. Period. Young, young people that are like. Well, it is. It's because the generation. I think the young. The, yeah, the young generation. It's like they see it like it's cool to. You know what I'm saying? To. Like, like that's that. the way to come up yeah yeah to glorify it and be but they don't know how real it is and how it's like you know what i'm saying you don't want your mama burying you oh my god nah but you know i remember when i first started doing stuff like the dope house or whatever doing the twin Berettas thing like we was, we was trying to do the whole gangster shit or whatever and it was cool like we got ourselves a name off of it but then when I started doing my own shit, I was like, yeah, that gangster stuff is cool, but I feel like I'm more of a complex individual than that, and I want to do something outside of what I was doing in that group thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I got comfortable just stepping away from doing that gangster music mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, and I found, I feel like I found a lane in doing that. And so for the kids now, I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because like I just explained, you know, I, I came out doing that same mm -hmm. type of shit. But if I could tell somebody else that thinks that that's the way they need to begin, it's like, honestly, it's not. You don't have to jump in being the hardest person out. Like, you just got to jump in with your own creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you can... I mean, when you look at hip-hop, like, hip-hop is... is got a lot of violent uh stories and yeah things like that but when you look at other types of music you find you catch some of it in, in other types of music but for the most part no nah, it ain't like that you ain't got to be the hardest country singer the hardest yeah. singer, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta be the that's most funny singer, you know so, yeah i mean it's, it's just gotta be creative. And you just gotta be yourself, man. And then when you are putting out that that um energy, like you just the hardest nigga or the gangster shit. When you, you when you like talking all that shit in the booth, you gotta go and travel and be and do these other shows in these other cities. And you got you're bringing that type of energy that's gonna draw up to you. You know what I'm saying? You're drawing that shit close to you. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And like i always say the goal is to get out of the street not a lot of rappers they you know what i'm saying start to blow up and then they go do some street shit or like mm -hmm. then they start selling drugs or then they start running with a gang after they blow up and that don't make no damn sense yeah. i mean and as far as as far as that music video and the people that, that were involved i heard it was something like nine people that got hit and two of them died that's so sad yeah i mean there's a possibility that luck you or i could maybe have some kind of ties in somewhere with whoever that was. I don't, I don't even know what artist it was, but, you know, we know people that know people. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to speak specifically on the artist or what the artist was promoting because um, I don't know that person like that. Um, but it's just, it, it's like you were saying, you, you put out that image or, or you, you project something and what you get in return is a lot of times somebody... Uh, just 
wanting to combat that. Yeah. Combat what you're doing. Like, I don't know. Try you, test you. Test you, but, you know, you flashing this and that, and somebody want it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like, hey, I got it over here. I know, and I I've done that for a year. I've my whole first ten years of my career was like that. Me just showing off, and you know what I'm saying, flashing jewelry and money and shit like that. And luckily, that never happened to me. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, that it does happen. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to bring this up, not to like judge people or like preach. But because, you know, your name and your history, like, in the rap game and just to bring some type of advice or, like, guidance to the young generation. Yeah, my advice would be, like, if you in the streets, I understand when you're in the streets and you're in that lifestyle and that's just all you know. But you're trying to get into the music industry to leave that shit alone. You know what I'm saying? You're not trying to get into the music industry to continue on with that lifestyle that'll lead you to death or a prison. You know what I'm saying? So you need to take the opportunity that you got. If you got a little bit of followers, you got a little platform, you need to take that that opportunity and, and lead a street life alone. You know what I'm saying? And just, just focus on your music business and music career if that's what you want to do you know what i'm saying don't just jump in the music business and continue on with the street shit and i understand it's kind of hard when you got a lot of homeboys behind you and a lot of homeboys that you grew up with because i was like that too that i tried to bring all my homies with me from the neighborhood at first but you'll end up just st- staying stuck in that same street shit that i end up getting you locked up or killed you know what i'm saying so you got to really just think about it you know what i'm saying like do you really want to make a career out of it or do you want to continue on doing some street shit you know what i'm saying mm, i'd be scared as hell like when lucky has to step out to go do a music video which he doesn't do that as much or like as he used to or as often but sometimes you know it comes up i mean he's a rapper and i'd be scared as hell at home like are you okay? Where yeah, you at? Because they don't even only have to be you that they're coming no, after. I like, know. it's the other people that you're working with, collabing with, or like are around, and you don't ever know, you know. And it could be one of them setting you up, you know, or making it seem like y'all are both getting got. But yeah. you know, it. I'd be scared as hell because I'm from the hood. I came from that. You know, I'm not saying that I used to rob, but I've been robbed, and it just be. Uh-uh. And now I'm more aware now because I feel like now I got more shit to lose. I'm so like, scared, babe. I got kids and I got a family. <laughs> both and and I and now I look back and think like how reckless I was by just being out there like just really slipping. You know what I'm saying? If you think about it, I was slipping like off my note a lot of times. Just being out there, just being. You know what I'm saying? Just just really slipping. You know what I'm saying? But now I'm more cautious because now I got shit to lose. But I didn't have no no family or no nothing to lose back then. So I was just running wild in the streets. You know what I'm saying? But really was slipping. Yeah, I know I be getting on his nerves sometimes. Like, what time you coming home? Hurry up. Get your ass back over here. But it's just because, like, y'all don't understand men that are in relationship and have to step out and you know be away from your family at times not only on your nine to five or whatever if you have like a side hustle that you do like you be us as women we be scared like look at nipsey and lauren like that broke my heart like what she had to go through that pain like i could not imagine like uh uh-uh and i know i'll be getting on your nerves baby but i just want the best for us that's another example of like trying to stay with you and and trying to put your homies on and trying to be able to do stuff for your homeboys and sometimes you know what i'm saying it's just it is what it is you gotta leave you know what i'm saying wash your hands and be like yo we ain't kids no more you know what i'm saying i got my own kids you know what i'm saying i can't be just trying to put everybody on all i can do is just lead by example and show you what i did and how i did it you know what i'm saying yeah. and what's, what's, what's bad though is like we can say these types of things over and over but it don't get through to nobody until they actually see for themselves mm-hmm. and that's 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 the bad part about it like i wish yes, people uh, could just uh i wish people could could hear these types of things and this type of encouragement and really just apply it instantly but people gotta learn the hard way i guess yeah yeah but if you are listening and even if you don't take it in consideration one time like today i know that the minute that you go through whatever you have to go through to actually 
have like an eye opener. You gonna remember this. You gonna remember everything and everybody that once told you. Stay away from it. Change yeah. life. And if and if you do better, if you are a rapper and you come really come from that lifestyle, then you should know that you really trying to get out of that shit. You know what I'm saying? You should know that that's not where you you want to be. You know what I'm saying? So really, just take that opportunity to change your life around. <sighs> Again, we're not judging. We're not trying to preach. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to stay like walking a straight line the whole time but even if you do go a little left or go a little right one of these days just know you can always go back to trying again you know walk that straight line yeah and try to make something out of yourself make people proud make make the people that love you proud is that the type of thing they talk about in church too i ask because i don't really go to church and i don't know what they talk about there yeah and in in other words yeah 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 like like how i was telling you that for uh what is it failure is one of the most precious gifts that god could give you is because you can when you fail nine times out of ten you're just like man god you know that's when you turn back to living right you know or trying to live right and then looking up to god and doing all that houston just walked in here butt naked with just a diaper on like what y'all doing man bust the door open so what y'all what what y'all think about uh Trump bombing this nigga in Iran? Oh my god. I didn't really want to get into that. Why? Because we said it at the beginning of our podcast career. We said we wanted oh, to get yeah. into no religion. Oh yeah, we did say that. And we that's the first thing and we, we jumped in. We talk about religion and politics. <laughs> and politics. <laughs> but here we are. I don't know. My take on Trump, I don't really like Trump. I don't really look into too too, too much into Trump because of just things that happen with my race and just things that, like he has different opinions than I do but well I think that he just did that because they he's were just getting impeached, impeached and he yes. was trying to let his nuts hang and be like yo look what I can do I'm finna go kill this nigga yeah. you know what I'm saying and show y'all I'm a G yeah. you know what I'm saying that I think that's what he did cause like Barack Obama before he went out he killed uh Bin Laden you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. So I think Donald Trump wanted to do something big like that. You know what I'm saying? Because they did kill the other dude and head of the ISIS dude, but nobody really knew about that or heard about it. You know what I'm saying? So he wanted to do something to some, Come do on. some, something that would make news. You know what I'm saying? Something that was newsworthy. So that's why he took that dude out. That was the head of the. Uh, uh, I, I, I think along those same similar lines that it was all uh, like a plot to get his impeachment mm-hmm. stuff out of the news so much and, and bring in this new thing. But the way I, I see it is I was expecting something like this to happen regardless of the impeachment. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Only because this is a, a re-election year. Yeah, 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 yeah. You he was going to do so, something like that yeah, before. So he, uh, he want to have something go down to where he's already already involved in a war. A, of war or just something that requires his attention Mm -hmm. to where if another candidate started coming in and people were liking another person uh, to be the president instead of him he's already got himself so rabbled up into a current affair Mm -hmm. that the public is like well we might as well just let him stay and finish it finish his business you know what i'm saying i feel like that's what it's all about I'll i'll be thinking like I was literally expecting something to pop off. Yeah. Anyways. Do you vote, Coast? I'm not registered to vote. No. You know what? I'm not either, and I was trying to do it before last year ended because I had my uh, my card, but I sent it back to myself. <laughs> Tell me why she's, she goes, hey, go mail my... I was mailing some merch off so we're at the post office where we go mail our merch. She goes, hey, mail my voter's registration card. So I didn't look at the address. I was like, okay, I was so, so I just happy. went and dropped it off. And she mailed it back to our house. <laughs> I don't know how to do you, you it. Know you where you put the where you put the two the sender. Well, she put our address. No, I didn't the, put it. It already came on it. So in my head, I'm thinking because it already has the like everything. All you got to do is sign it, fill it, it out, and mail it back. Yeah, well, that's what well, I did. she just spilled it out and then went and dropped it off. I just signed it and put it in the mail. But it's the same thing they mailed us, so they just ended up mailing it right back. So it came you, right you back to, to us. Y'all. You got to put it in an envelope and put it to the uh, place you mailed it to. 
if y'all know, give me advice because I don't know if it's too late for me to register to vote. I know it's not. No, it's, not. it's not. And I want to vote. But if you could vote, um, who would you vote for? You don't know who's running? Like Bernie Sanders. Uh... Feel the burn. <laughs> that, that's what he says. That's what he says. Yeah. Feel the burn. No, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely for Bernie. No, nah, man. I mean, I, I've never voted before. Yeah. I don't really get in politics like that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too knowledgeable on who's, who's up and who's saying what. Yeah, I don't be watching this shit because I just feel like they're a bunch of puppets. But nah, I don't feel that way about Bernie because if you look back into history, that man marched with black people. That man, like he was all for like people's rights. Like no, there's I understand that. Like uh, Barack had, Obama was for the people too. But once you're has, in office, then they come them other dudes in them suits come and say, okay, this is what goes down. You know what I'm but saying? But what's in your heart, it'll always show as a president. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I mean, it's yeah, not. Yeah, like look at John F. Kennedy. You know what I'm saying? He was for the people, and you know what I'm saying? They took his top off. I don't know. But I feel like in the society or in the generation that we are right now, like that, that would impact more than it did when John F. Kennedy died. Like that would probably open people's eyes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't either. I don't know. But I think it's time to wrap up this podcast because Baby Houston's like in the need of our attention. Yeah, I did want to ask y'all to type down below in the comments before we wrap everything up. Give us subjects, topics y'all want to talk us to talk about. Um again, we're going to be as consistent as we can with the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying, you guys. And then I also want to make it a priority this year for us to start streaming it. Yeah. I keep telling you, I don't know, we we need to like really like put it on all streaming platforms. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We just got to get the audio right, man. Once the audio is right, we'll be able to do it. Make sure y'all comment below. Hit the like button. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe. Click the bell so you get notified. Luciano TV. Luciano TV. You- merch, on merch on deck. Hold up, baby. If you haven't went and got your uh, Luciano TV flash drive preloaded with 30 albums, go to LucianoTV.com and copy one. You- I'm on Instagram at CassettePost. Lucky is... It's lucky, baby. <laughs> Asia underscore stay true. You did. Y'all have a beautiful Sunday evening, and Houston, we will be bye. back. Say bye-bye. Say gang gang.